You've probably heard of boron printers, but how about their extruders? In this video, I'll assemble and test it to see how it performs on our Ender 3 version 2. So stick around. Just printing the parts and assembling might not turn out too well. There are two F695 2RS bearings, which are flange bearings for this print, and they should have an interference fit. I would suggest purchasing the bearings in advance to test them in a sample print or you'll end up with this problem. I'll also add a link to the Voron website below and they have the parts list and all the links for everything required for this build. I will be printing in PETG and ABS is recommended, but in this case PETG for me is easier to record for video. ABS has a higher tolerance for heat, but PETG is easier to print as long as it's kept dry. In previous videos with this filament, I have been struggling with stringing, and to fix the problem, I've been using this filament dryer by iBoss. This was sent to me to review, and I've been using it for all of my filaments along with their vacuum bag system to keep my filament dry. And it does work very well. So if you're interested in this product, I'll add a link in the description below. And one note about drawing PETG while printing is that it tends to get a little bit sticky. So to prevent the problem, I dry all my filaments ahead of time and vacuum seal them so they're ready when I need them. This M4 is a slightly modified design, and that's because I'm working on some different concepts to mount this to my Ender 3 version 2 printer. This is my second M4 build, and all of these parts were printed with my first M4. Now it is recommended to grease these bearings, they will last longer. Just try not to get any grease on the gear, which could then transfer to the filament. One mistake I made is that I purchased 5mm hardened shaft, which is a bad choice because it can't be filed very easily. So I did have to use an angle grinder to add the flats, which looks a little bit sloppy. And here you can see how the gear lines up with the filament holes perfectly. If it doesn't for you, now's the best time to make the adjustment before the rest of the parts are mounted. The small floating pusher and latch did give me some trouble, I think due to elephant's foot throwing off the tight tolerances. I ended up compensating for elephant's foot and cura, and that seemed to work out well for these parts on the second attempt. I've already gone ahead and reamed the holes using a 3mm drill bit, and the bolts tend to be a little bit snug in those holes and reaming does help during assembly. This is a 20 tooth aluminum pulley, and the flange seems to come off easily with a set of pliers. To make sure that the large pulley doesn't wobble, I like to tighten the screws in the same manner as I tighten the rim on a car, which is to tighten opposing screws, and that seems to keep everything in alignment. I am planning on modifying this, so I'm not using thread locker at this point, but it is recommended to use it to prevent loosening of the fasteners over time. And I've also changed the design to accommodate an M10 threaded fitting, which is the same fitting used on the hot end because they're inexpensive and I have them on hand. Thank you. 
So these are three added mounting holes with my modified design and I've also removed the flanges which are meant to mount to the T-slot frame. This extruder boasts a 4 to 1 pulley ratio. For every 4 turns of the small pulley we see one revolution of the large one. This causes the motor to have to spin faster and with this setup we will have more accurate extrusions and retractions and resist any potential for skipping. The design incorporates the original motor as well as motor rotation and that means there will be no changes to the electrical which is a feature I really appreciate. As a result of the large ratio we need to set the e-steps to a much larger value. The one that works for me is 560. But the problem with a number this high is that the printer does not accept that value. So luckily there's a simple fix and that is to open any g-code program and insert the following lines. M92 which is modify the amount of e-steps, and then E560. And to save that value into storage, M500. Of course, after making the change, you're gonna to wanna to test the e-steps and adjust as needed. While using the extruder, I noticed it's quite a bit noisier than the original, and that's because the motor is spinning more than four times faster due to the combo of the extruder gear size being smaller and the four to one ratio. I also have had quite a bit of trouble loading the filament into the extruder and to prevent the problem I cut the end of the filament on an angle and I've been straightening out the filament at the end as well. So after using this extruder for quite a while, how did it perform? Is it any good? Well the print quality is good. It is at least as good as a single gear metal extruder when comparing the finished product of all these prints. I was having pretty good success with the metal single gear. So let's move on to some torture testing where the metal single gear did not perform well. First I'm going to disable combing mode which turns on all retractions for infill and we'll rerun a print which has always caused jamming to see if it finishes. And for more info on combing check out the link above. Hey, it worked. So that is a plus for the Voron M4. In my next video, we'll find a way to mount this properly and professionally to the printer so it looks like it belongs. And I'm looking to make something unique and dynamic. So if you have any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell for a heads up on any new videos. Take care everybody. We'll see you on the next one.